the WrestleMania 13 match with the double turn. How far in advance did you guys know there was going to be a double turn? Because if you watch it, kind of, it's, it looks like you guys had this plan. It was all like culmination of a thing, but it just worked. Like you guys went into that. You were the baby face. He was the heel, and it came out the complete other way. Well, I really found out maybe as soon as Sean basically forfeited the belt and took himself out of the equation, like he was retired. He retired, went home to find his smile. All that. It was kind of... Um, it's a very serious condition when you lose your smile. We were very um, sort of left hanging, kind of like, what, what are we going to do now? And I remember that when they stuck me with Steve, to, which is what they did, they stuck, just threw me and Steve together for WrestleMania 13, and it was kind of like, <clears throat> like as much as Steve and I, I'm always speaking for myself, but we love working with each other, and we're very good friends and everything, but we just worked Survivor Series. And um, I was hoping, like the way it was planned, I was, I was supposed to wrestle Sean for the rematch for the title at WrestleMania 13. But that's why he forfeited the title, so he wouldn't have to do that. <laughs> and so when that happened, um, uh, I didn't see any point in wrestling Steve again in a non-title match. I mean, ultimately, my goal was in those at that time, I think, was to... Um, I saw Steve as the next best choice to the guy to beat me for the title. Um, so I <clears throat> was kind of pushing for Steve, but I didn't want to work with Steve so quick. I didn't want to wrestle with him like rated right WrestleMania when we just worked Survivor Series, especially in a non-title match. And um, and they gave the main event. They gave the main event um, to Sid and Undertaker. So I always felt that me and Steve were just a match thrown together on the card. And I wasn't overly excited about it. And I didn't know what the, the, the outcome or the finish was going to be. But I didn't sense from Steve that he was that thrilled about. You know, I think we both thought it was a bit of a, the kind of rushing our, rushing our um, storyline. I would like to have worked with Steve, say maybe SummerSlam and a big, 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 big rematch kind of thing. But um, <clears throat> so we, I never really talked to Steve or knew much about what the, you know, I just did my promos from every TV taping, like every, I think it was three weeks we did the TV tapings. And, you know, I was getting a lot more heat every week with all the stuff I, they had me doing. And it's funny, when I was in that time period, I had, when Vince talked me into turning heel and then they turned me heel, I remember it was the day after I fought Steve at WrestleMania 13 was when I did the big promo for about 25 minutes in the ring where I told America to kiss my ass and all that stuff. But <clears throat> that whole interview, which I think was one of my greatest in-ring promos I ever did. Now, for, for all the guys that always talk about Bret Hart couldn't cut promos, I think they should watch that promo. Um, it was such a, a good promo in, in the sense that uh, I really threw it back on the American fans that they were the dickheads and that I was the, the good guy. And I had lots of reasons. And it was funny how the audiences were changing in that time period, um, especially I remember particularly on the East Coast. And I think that was probably due to ECW. But the fans started to kind of find it was more fun to um, cheer the bad guys and piss the good guys off. So they were there to kind of make trouble at the shows a lot of the times, and they'd start chanting for for all the bad guys. Which during that time period, it it, it really um, like it. I, I noticed that it it really changed the um, the um, atmosphere of the matches, like the the kids and the the families and stuff that came to wrestling weren't really, they seemed to be a little bit subdued because the, I'll say, older male crowd, like teenagers and guys in their 30s and stuff were, you know, rabidly kind of um, booing the baby faces all the time. So they, they'd shut up all the little kids and stuff and the little kids wouldn't put their signs up and it would sure just change the whole uh, dynamics of the matches. And I remember a lot of the good guys having a lot of trouble getting reactions. And the bad guys were getting, like Steve Austin was getting all the reaction in the world. Like, and you could sort of sense that he was going to become a baby face. And uh, guys like me would move over to the side. And I just saw it as a chance, well, I should just change styles. 
you know, just uh, wrestling like Brett the Hitman Hart and the old Hart Foundation days. It wasn't such a bad, um, wasn't such a hard um, transfer for me. I could, I could work heel, heel or babyface pretty easy. And so um, it was just building up pretty nice. I think my momentum was going pretty well. Um, but when I showed up to wrestle Steve at WrestleMania 13, um, I don't think either one of us had much of a plan to, to for the match. We were kind of like, ever we started talking about in the dressing room, I was like, so what are we doing? And he was like, I don't know, what do you want to do? And so we were like, F we kind of blew our wad at Survivor Series. We did every kind of high spot and think move we could think of at Survivor Series. And now we have to come up with a completely kind of different match on kind of on short notice. And I don't think either one of us is too, I think we felt that, that we were minimized on that pay-per-view. In fact, for all my WrestleMania matches, I think WrestleMania 13 was one of my worst payoffs. So they, they paid me, you know, not very well, nothing special. And funny enough, the Iron Man match where I wrestled Sean for the hour, is all, the hour match was also one of my worst payoffs that I ever got in wrestling compared to my biggest payoff, which was Bob Backlund at WrestleMania 11, which so go figure that. <laughs> but um, anyway, me and Steve weren't, um, we were just kind of trying to figure it out. And we sat on the ring apron and uh, we just started t talking about it. And I said, the way I see this fight or this match is like a school fight. You know, with, uh, like I was the sort of the, the guy that was the cool guy in school and popular with everybody. And uh, <clears throat> I was, uh, you know, maybe the quarterback on the football team kind of thing. And Steve Austin was the new guy that came to school, had a shaved head, and I was kind of a badass. And, and I could, the way I remember talking to Steve about it is like, so we, this should be like a school fight. And all the fans are basically all the kids at the school watching this fight. And, that's where we started kind of the psychology of the match and how we should build it. And uh, I, I love the WrestleMania 13 match um, just for, I love it for the fact that I think Steve trusted me, which most of the wrestlers that knew me trusted me pretty good to, to put together the best match possible for them. I mean, I always try to make my opponents look um, credible and uh, give them the match. I always thought I'm going to give you the match that you can, play back for your kids some days being your best match and uh, <clears throat> with Steve we just kind of pieced together a, a, a really good little match I love the match I had with Steve and uh, for the intensity that it had